Hello, BookTube. It's Eric. I am back with another uh, book haul. As you can see, the closet is still in progress. I haven't gotten a lot done recently, but hopefully it's going to get straightened out sometime soon. All right, so I've got a couple of things to show. I've got some books I've picked up at thrift stores. i got some books I picked up at a library sale, and I've got some books that I picked up at a going out of business sale for my local mystery bookstore. So without further ado, um, I kind of think I've uh, appropriately sorted these, but we will see. Um, sorry for the one science fiction fantasy novel, Norman Spinrad's Child of Fortune. Um, I haven't read a lot of Spinrad. I've got a couple of his books, but I really, really like Agents of Chaos, which I need to reread. And I found this in the thrift store for very cheap, so I grabbed it. Okay. Uh, moving on to, let's knock through these. Okay. Um, bookstore going out of business, Aunt Agatha's here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. A mystery bookstore. They're calling it quits after 26 years. They've made the decision to call it quits, which is good for them, but bad for them. You know, times change. Sometimes ready to move on. Hopefully somebody will step in to fill that void in this town, but they're blowing out their stock. So I picked up a Carter Brown double. I've not read any of the Aunt, uh, Al Wheeler novels, so this one has Night Wheeler. Figured I would grab that. Um, a couple of Dan J. Marlowe books, which I have other copies of, but that's fine. I, I, I don't mind supporting the local bookstore, and uh, these are always nice to have. So... I've read the first two in that series before it becomes a spy series, and I really like them. So I'm looking forward to getting into the later books. Unfortunately, none of those are the third volume. Uh, I picked this up for the collection, not for reading, because I have another copy of it. But this is Samuel Holt, What I Tell You Three Times is False. This is actually Donald Westlake writing a series that he wrote four books for that uh, he was trying to write under a pseudonym, and his name eventually leaked out as to who uh, who the author was. But I read the first one and liked it quite a bit. So, uh, like I said, this one's mainly for the collection. Okay, Bill Pronzini, the stalker. Early Pronzini crime stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that. So, and I love that cover. This is very, like, 70s. This is, like, 73. You can tell by how thin it is. You can see the, the, the red edging on there. A couple of these pages are bent over. That's okay, though. Um, I want to get into some more of his stuff. Okay, what else did I pick up? I uh, picked up uh, Frederick Brown. This is a reprint of the Fabulous Clip Joint. Here's the Aunt Agatha bookmark. So I have read the Fabulous Clip Joint, but I didn't own a copy. So I, I once again, I wanted to support them, so I picked this up. Um, I'm looking forward to rereading it. Picked up another Frederick Brown, The Deep End. So I've got a, I've got a number of his books uh, from various publishers. Um, this one was a this one has like tape on it, but you know his stuff is hard to find, so I'm okay with that. All right. Um, picked up a copy of Heath. Uh, W.L. Heath, A Violent Saturday. I do have um, the other book that Black Lizard published of his, which I have yet to read. But I, I like these these books, the size, the the art, the spine, all of it. I love because it it's cohesive, and I like that kind of style. So I think that's it for the books. Oh, I picked up this one there as well. This is another Joe Gores. Um, this is a, the uh, Dan Kearney Associates uh, collection, as I recall. Um, or that was his big series. So, um, I wanted to pick up some more of his stuff when I saw it. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, I think that's it for the stuff I picked up at Aunt Agatha's. Picked up this, because I found it for 50 cents. Jim Nesbitt, who I know was, uh, republished by Black Lizard, so I grabbed this at a local thrift store. And let's see what else have I got here. Um, trying to find... John D. McDonald, No Deadly Drug. I believe this is the nonfiction book, that true crime book that he wrote. This was in the era, I guess, when he was trying to prove that he could do more than just writing Travis McGee. He, uh, he challenged himself to write some science fiction, some speculative fiction. 
uh, a bestseller. Condominium was his, I'm going to get in the Book of the Month Club and it's going to be a bestseller. And uh, so when I see this kind of stuff, I, I just grab it, especially when it's 25 cents or a dime even sometimes. All right. Um, what we got here? Simon Brett, or I'm sorry, Michael Brett mystery. Uh, I think I found that for a dime. Um, this just, I grabbed it at a, a library sale today because I like the cover. Um, it's, it looks like crime stuff. John O'Hare short stories. I picked this up recently. I have a small collection of his stuff. Uh, found this today. Copy of Money Shot. Um, I think these were the blowout ones that went to like dollar stores or whatever. But I picked this up. And this is a great book. I, I like this book a lot. Uh, I've got other copies of it. But for 50 cents, I was going to grab it at the library sale to pass it along or trade it, whatever. Uh, Max Allen Collins. This goes in the Max Allen Collins collection. So this is this is uh, the Frank Nitty Trilogy Book 3. But this is a Nate Heller novel, apparently. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Um, I don't really remember my Chicago gangster history enough to know exactly when Nitty died. But, um, yeah, I'll get to these eventually because I like Collins' writing. All right. Um, copy of The Laughing Policeman. The Black Lizard. Vintage Crime Edition. Uh, yeah, I tend to grab these when I see them. And uh, I think I have all of them now, so I don't need to grab any more. I read that one way back, once upon a time. All right, what do we got here? So now, oh, well, let's do this one. Let's do this. This one. Sanctuary by Robert Lynn Asprin. Or edited. So this is the Thieves' World book one, two, and three. And um, I read these a long time ago when I was in elementary school. In elementary school, I was probably too young to read these. And Robert Lynn Asprin was, well, first of all, his son was a student in my elementary school at the time. He was maybe two grades behind me, and I used to talk with him on the playground and hang out a little bit. But he was my, my brother's scoutmaster, so he was a local writer. And uh, so you want, I mean, even as a young kid, you want to check out stuff written by people who are local to you. And I remember enjoying some of these. I really remember the, the Andrew Uffett stuff being my favorite. So, um... Maybe I'll, I'll, you know, read a couple of these short stories. I'm trying to sprinkle more short stories into my, to my reading, especially when I get into a novel that I'm just not feeling and a little bogged down by. Try to read a short story in the middle there. This looked interesting, and it was at a thrift store, and I wasn't going to buy anything because I didn't find anything except for this one book. And, and then I read the, fl I saw the title, and I read the flap, and I think this guy's a horror writer. I am not 100% sure. But um, this is The Witch by Hugh Fleetwood. It says, when Stefan the sound man, Al the is boom man, and Marina, the Italian script girl, start working on a new film, a story that may or may not end in murder, they assume that the only real difficulties they will have to face will be tiresome actors and insecure actresses. Uh, so this sounds, it looks like it's a satire of filmmaking. Uh, I did a little reading on this on this guy, and it sounds kind of interesting, so I might give this one a shot sooner rather than later, which I know I say about everything, but it's all about the intention, right? So I also picked a copy of Stalkers, edited by, uh, let's see, Ed, the late Ed Gorman and Martin Greenberg, and I picked this up because it was a dollar and because it has uh, short stories by... Authors whose books I have but haven't read, so maybe I can check them out. Gorman's in here. Um, Dean Koontz, John Coyne, uh, F. Paul Wilson, Max Allen Collins again, Charles DeLint, uh, Richard Lamont. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the horror and mystery and crime writers of that 80s era. Okay, so we're getting a little long here, so I'm just going to blast through these horror ones. Um, Gary Bradner, I think Paperback Maniac has talked about this guy before. Doomstalker. And this is a faucet book. So, and it says horror right there, and that's why I grabbed it. Uh, Death Angel, not the band. And this is a pageant book, and it's horror slash occult, but it's got this kind of raised cover. It looks very much like a zebra cover from the 80s. Uh, 
the Gatekeeper. This might be in paperbacks from hell. I need to take a look. But this is a leisure. So, uh, yeah. Love that cover. Another cover that I love. Uh, Red Dreams by Dennis Asherson. Even if this isn't good, that cover is worth the 50 cents I paid for this book. Yeah. Um, this is a Berkeley. So, Christopher Pike. Uh, I've got a couple of his books. Notice that it says fiction and not horror. So, and it, on the front, it clearly says a novel of horror. All right. Another anthology, Whispers 2. This is the, another one I picked up at Ann Agatha's. Um, who's in here? Um, Carl Edward Wagner, who I want to read more by. Uh, Richard Christensen Masson. Um, Hugh B. Cave. Charles L. Grant, Dennis Asherton, Manly Wade Wellman, Fritz Lieber, David Drake. So uh, this is one I want to check out some of the short stories from. Uh, Great Tales of Suspense. This is this is kind of a cheapy. I think I paid 10 cents for it. But it's got H.G. E. Wells, Charles Dickens, Conan Doyle, Ambrose Spears, and Washington Irving. So why not? And then finally, I found a copy of... Uh, this is going to be fun because of the glare. Borderlands. There you go. Uh, edited by Thomas F. Mantignone. It's a little tear in the cover. I'm not really worried about that. But it's got F. Paul Wilson. It's got Joe Lansdale. It's got Brian Hodge. Um, Charles L. Grant. You know, just all of the usual suspects and a few others. And uh, I kind of love these 90s chaotic covers at this point. I didn't like them back in the day, but now they feel kind of comforting. And, oh, this is a white wolf, I believe. Let's see if I can get that. Anyway. Is that white wolf? Yes, it is. Anyway, um, thanks for everyone for watching. Hopefully we'll be back soon with a uh, music update. Mostly compact discs, but whatever. And, uh... You know, like, subscribe, leave comments, all that kind of stuff. Thanks again for watching. Catch you all next time.